uh, and welcome to this discussion of work environment. I'm so glad that uh, there are so many of you here in the audience, although it's still Friday, it's a working day. So, But those of you who are maybe on vacation, it is still nice to have you here and uh, listen about working and working environment. Uh, so our panelists here today are from my left side, Agne Aya, Director of Central Operations from the Estonian State Forest Management Center. Krister Haglund, Chairman of the Board of Milton Services in Ukraine, CEO of for the Finnish Fair Corporation and Senior Vice President of Corporate Communications at Finnair. Tiina Saarveelma, Occupational Happiness Specialist and Psychologist. And Jari Haganen, Research prof Professor from the Finnish Institute of Occupational Health. And I am Elo Ellerma. I'm a Senior Consultant, consultant at PR and Government Relations Agency Meta Advisory. So before we dive deep, deep into this discussion today, uh, let's do a small introductory round with a small fun exercise, hopefully. So imagine it's Monday morning, you are walking into the office and a, sto and a song starts playing quite loudly. So what is this one song that gets you going, that gives you this energy to start an eight-hour working day and to start the whole working week? Let's start from here, Hagne. Yeah. Oh, can you hear me? Okay, you can now. So, um, <coughs> Elo gave this uh, exercise uh, for us before, and uh, I have to say that uh, uh, I spent uh, quite a time yesterday evening uh, going through my <laughs> my Spotify list, and uh, and of course uh, it was uh, first I thought that okay, Queens would be the easiest choice or something like that. So, but. Um, there were a few options uh, still, but then uh, I thought that I go with the, the best day of my life. It's not very common, uh, but it's, uh, it's from the American authors, uh, so you can check it out if you like. Let's go on. Yeah, well, this, was, uh, this was new for me, but, uh, but it was very fun and, uh, and then also time efficient for me, because for me it was immediately clear. And uh, it goes like this. Voiko ihanammin päivä enää alkaa? Onko ihanampaa aamua kuin tää? And so forth. And this is, uh, this is uh, John Liebkin, the Finnish uh, pop songer, who, who, who had this song in the, I think it's something, six, 70s, I think, 60s, 70s. And uh, um, when I think about it, uh, it was it made such an impact for me because when I was in the army, then when you woke up the first morning in army, then this song was played ironically, uh, very loud uh, all over the barracks, and it was so fun. I uh, and it's a good song, uh, and I like it, and it's beautiful that. Uh, uh, could it be a better day? Uh, could it uh, be a more beautiful? Uh, morning, the the birds are singing, and uh, and uh, your hand is in mine. So <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, and Tina. <laughs> yes, I agree. That that was very exciting exercise. And um, uh, during pandemic time, I I took a DJ course because I. I, uh, I thought that maybe my work is dis disappearing also. So <laughs> I prepared for for second career, and s since then I can say that there is no one song, but there are always lists, as you said. And um, uh, recently, yesterday I came from France, so I I often sazam uh, music, and maybe I will just give you an example. This is the latest one in my. <laughs> so yeah, that could be. Why not? <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, Yari? Fantastic choice. First, I have to say this Christer's lovely morning song that <laughs> this is what I used to sing to my son when he was a teenager. And you know, teenagers don't get up, and he hated me for that song. <laughs> but uh, okay, I was happy to be a teenager when the punk rock emerged in the late 70s. So my song apparently comes from that time. I used to be a punk rock singer as well, and uh, my choice would be 
Does anybody know this? Ian Dury's uh, Reasons to be Cheerful, Part 3. Ian was, uh, had uh, suffered from polio when he was seven years old. He suffered from all his life of, this, of the consequences of this, and then he has this wonderful Cockney, Cockney dialogue song, Reasons to be Cheerful, the, all the reasons that we have to be grateful for. So check that song if you don't know. <laughs> oh, thank you, everyone. Um, I think what we have learned here already is that people are really different. People are really different at what motivates them, uh, what keeps them going, and so on. So let's now try to uh, discuss this further. And let's start with, uh, and let's start from the very beginning, actually. Let's start with uh, job advertisements and uh, applying for a job. So I think a, a job ad is a two-way street. Uh, one thing is what the company says. And uh, lately, when you look at uh, uh, job ads, what they say is everything beautiful. They say that they have the best salary, they have the best team, they have all the support you need, uh, the best environment, and so on and so on. Can all this actually be true at the same time? So, okay, let's start from here. I actually believe that it's today already impossible actually to promise something that you couldn't bring on, uh, to the table. Uh, but of course, uh, the job as is the selling ad. So uh, you, have to, you have to sell yourself uh, because uh, we all want the best people. So, but uh, how, do you, how you get them, so to say, if you don't say that you have best this and that and, and then you support them. So, but uh, you can't twist it too much because uh, if you're actually not uh, uh, prepared to offer this one, so uh, the word go, uh, gets around. So uh, I don't think that um, there are too much air in those, but uh, uh, yeah. But when you say that uh, all the uh, advertisements are the same, this, I don't think so. There are the very dull ones uh, still, so, uh, uh, and um, and maybe they should so because they are just saying that this is the work um, because not all the ones don't have the I don't know free fruits on uh, on uh, on uh, fridges and uh, things like that those are not all the workplaces around Estonia unfortunately is it the same in Finland <coughs> yeah yeah uh, well first of all I would uh, uh, agree with with Agne and uh, and uh, and uh, when I compare East Estonia and Finland, I don't. I mean, when I s read those ads, it's very difficult to to really compare it. I would say, uh, but but uh, of course they are quite fancy and and very uh, positive and so forth. But uh, but at least I think that uh, that uh, that if uh, if you if you, I put an ad out, it had to, has to be accurate, and uh, and if you. Often you see, for example, competitive salary. And a competitive salary, we know more or less what a competitive salary for a certain position is. So then, of course, you are prepared to pay that uh, competitive salary. And uh, one who is applying for the job also knows it. But I think, uh, because I believe very much in transparency and uh, building trust, so, so I think that uh, uh, as an employer, if you are a lousy, if you, a lousy organization and so forth, and then you actually would gain so much if you would, would just state in your ad that, yeah, it's this and that, and it's a competitive salary, but we have been one big problem, and we want you to fix it. That could work. Uh, yeah, I could also here advocate uh, like job seekers or employees uh, view, and uh, there is certain things they really require nowadays from workplaces. And do you know what is the most uh, you know like attractive thing that they want? Anyone? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Flexibility is number one, and what we see it's it's true that. Employers, they put this uh, flexibility to um, job ads as well, but uh, often it's a very misunderstood thing. Because uh, if they now talking about this real work, then it turns out that, okay, we have like one remotely working day, and then you have to be in office, or you really cannot decide your way of working. And that is a huge problem, because if you talked about trust and transparency, then it's not there, it's only add and nothing more. So 
I have maybe it's a small solu solution already, but um, nowadays uh, what job seekers want, they want like tailor-made careers. Basically, they, 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 their desire is that uh, manager or team lead or employer asks from them what you personally want to be happy. So basically, we should like provide like tailor-made motivational packages. And that is something like needs to talk about. What is the main thing in Finland that uh, companies compete in? What is the main thing they say in their job ads? <coughs> well, I don't know that sh for sure. It depends on, on, the, on the organization, company culture also. But I would say that the, this uh, job uh, advert is, is the, like the first phase in building bonds between the, the employer and the future employee. So it's building this psychological contract, so to speak, so that uh, if, if I give my best to this company, what do I give in return? And if that does not correspond, then you probably are not that loyal anymore. You are, don't feel you are not so motivated. And, and so it's indeed the core issue is trust here. And then employers should be very, very honest in what they promise. And I would like to hear as a job applicant also what, what is not going so well and what are being done in order to improve in this sense. That would also be very and then one other side is not only what the workplace promises, but what it is expected of these ideal workers. And that is also very interesting. My colleague has studied that and historically also in Finland. And whereas in earlier advert, job advertisements, it was uh, what, what kind of uh, employee it was searched was that you are sober, you don't drink alcohol during the work days. And that was quite enough already. Perhaps you are also competent, but that you can perhaps learn also with the, with the seniors. And nowadays you can expect really, really that you should already by now know everything. And that is another problem perhaps. Maybe a small comment here. So uh, yeah, one thing is job ads and uh, they are quite maybe similar nowadays, but there is a one more, uh, maybe more important thing, which is like meaning of job. And there we see that companies can be different or the areas are different. So if we can like speak with uh, through this meaning or, or purpose, then it's totally different thing. And maybe all those small things are not so important anymore. It's like kind of like obvious then. Agne had a comment. Yeah, yeah I just wanted to draw attention to this, that uh, the flexibility and the mentioning it uh, in, in a job ads, uh, because I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, none of us have seen the job ad mentioning flexibility about uh, the teachers or the construction workers or the doctors, because I, I think in, in those um, means that we are discussing here right now, we have a focus just very much in, in uh, office workers. So, but there are so many other uh, professionals that uh, that actually don't have same type uh, type of. Uh, uh, but Agne, we uh, we don't uh, speak only about the time flexibility. Flexibility could be that I can maybe probably decide where my career goes. So, in that sense, every job can be in my opinion, yeah, yeah, flexible. Yeah. I, I, I totally agree with you, but, but I would like to, to look this uh, this topic a bit yeah. wider. That was my point. Yeah, and Christel? Yes, uh, uh, you are right, Agne. There, there's a huge difference between, and also, I mean, generally speaking, also blue-collar work and white-collar work, and, and then uh, public and private, of course, uh, uh, also, because, uh, because I have been in, in management and a leader for almost in my entire uh, active life, so so I have seen a lot of changes, and I've been also both in public and private life. And the tools you have as a, as a leader or a manager uh, are totally different when we speak about public and, and, uh, and private. So that is uh, good to keep in mind. When it comes to flexibility, uh, well, well, yeah, I could say that, uh, that it was interesting. Some uh, 15 uh, years ago or something like that, suddenly when, when you were recruiting people, then young people started, they had in the applications, they had like, that they value family and free time. And that was unheard of when <laughs> I was <laughs> applying for jobs. You would had never put anything like that. Now, now, now it kind of, uh, it would be odd if it wouldn't be in, in, in that text. And flexibility, me as a, uh, uh, as a uh, 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 recruiting people, 
I definitely want to have flexibility for sure, but I, but uh, but it's a two-way street, of course. That uh, that it goes goes uh, uh, both ways because uh, I need everybody, need every organization needs people that can flex when there is a need for it for the organization, and and you need to have those resources. But on the other hand, then you uh, need also to respect uh, the flexibility that uh, your your uh, staff uh, have. We are going to talk about Yari. He wanted something to say. Yeah, one more thing about the, this flexibility. At least in Finland, after the pandemic, uh, the question is also where do I work? I want to work at home or my summer cottage, or perhaps I have a villa in Paide. I can do my job there. And now companies are struggling with this flexibility issues because it's so so important for the company, for the social purposes, and for the joint collaboration, learning, taking care of young employees, not to have too much of that sort of flexibility that you don't show up at your workplace anymore. I don't know whether you have same debate or thing going on in Estonia. I would be curious to hear. We do. <laughs> but we are going to talk about the flexibility uh, a little bit later on. Uh, but let's now uh, move over to the applicants. Uh, when we have this uh, job ad, uh, the company promises all the best things. But on the other hand, what the they require from the applicant is also these uh, requirements are quite tremendous. So they ask for uh, the certain degree, a certain experience, uh, a certain time of experience, and so on. So they are kind of, uh, somebody, someone already mentioned uh, that they are looking for super employees. Uh, what does this mean, actually? Do the applicants know that this is actually not true and they still try, or does it affect their mind, actually, that, that in, in the end they might not even apply anymore because they feel that they, they, they are not needed anywhere because they don't have all the requirements. Yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. I myself, when I uh, have an ad out, I don't want to be too specific because I want. Uh, I think it's very uh, important in in the team in, in in your organization that there that there is a diversity among uh, uh, among the staff members so that. Uh, that you have different kind of knowledge, uh, different kind of personalities, because in the end, that gives much uh, 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 better uh, results. And if you if you block out uh, certain persons, I, I don't think it's a it's a good idea because uh, because I mean in in a uh, process industry you might need robots, but but you don't need it in 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 uh, kind of uh, working places where I have been in. So. So yeah, I, I would, I always prefer to have it more, more, more in general terms in, in that sense. Yeah, there are as in Estonia there are also companies that do that. They are actually they there are job ads that say that we don't have any specific requirements. They only want a certain type of person, uh, but they don't need a degree or or mm. a certain experience. They are going to uh, going to. Um, uh, make this pe person uh, who is she, she's supposed to be. But uh, what is your experience? I would say it depends on the position. So um, just um, I had just uh, had experience that we were looking for the social media specialists, and uh, so to say, uh, we have the maximum amount of the candidates. And um, uh, my HR told me that it seems that everybody uh, who has the Insta account <laughs> thinks that they can do the job. So, but um, and we didn't ask very much in there. No degree. Uh, of course, we were looking some experience and things like that. But we wanted to actually to speak to the wider public, and and uh, we were actually looking that maybe really some young person could start from that position. But when I'm looking for the board member, for example, uh, you can't be too wide there. So uh, of course, you have to require certain uh, abilities, uh, experiences, uh, education, things like that. So and uh, I think uh, in human research, um, uh, the HR people usually say that uh, you just need one right candidate. So yeah, you have to speak to the right one. <laughs> Tina. So yeah, um, that's true that the job demands are increasing and there is one um, aspect I have uh, thought about which is uh, 
there are many, many professions which uh, needed like longer preparation previously. And now we think that we can solve it with the uh, onboarding programs, for instance. And also there is one uh, very nice quote from um, uh, Peter Koppel, if, if you know him. He says that um, many organizations would gladly hire one best person to do work of two people and achieve the results of four people. And it's quite, quite true, from, in, in my opinion. So. Yeah, I think also in the interests of the employer should be to make ex explicit to itself whether they are searching for a person who fits for the short-term goals or also in the longer term, because the work-life demands requirements change quite a lot, and then it comes to what Christo said, that also flexibility in this recruitment can be a really, really big thing. Or if you think very narrow-minded that, okay, this person is highly skillful for the present job, or then if you have this longer vision also. So. And maybe one more small comment, not only like skills and knowledge, but also like personal traits as well. You have to be a quick learner, you have to be like adaptable and social and etc. There are many, many lists of like nowadays personal competencies as well you should kind of fit. Which is uh, how, how, do you, uh, how do you measure a quick learner when you interview <laughs> people? <laughs> So we, we got this, uh, you know, exercise, fi <laughs> quickly find the song. <laughs> so which is more important to have, the, to have a person with a perfect uh, trait or to have a person uh, with a perfect experience and uh, maybe a, a certain degree? Which do you think is more important? I think it de depends on the job, I understand. Mm -hmm. You cannot uh, be a constructor uh, without any knowledge in constructions, but uh, still, if, if you would have to uh, hire someone, and uh, it, let's say you have a choice between having a person with a perfect experience, perfect degree, but their personality is not the something that would actually fit in a company, but you have another person who doesn't have any degree in that field and any experience, but <laughs> they would fit perfectly into this company. <laughs> Yari. <laughs> well, if there is such thing as bad personality, <laughs> so I have perhaps some experiences and I would try to avoid that kind of, because then you avoid, uh, then you anticipate problems in the later, for instance, if a person is really not wanting that job or does not want to, to collaborate, for instance, wants to work alone only, and, and then it can be a really bad thing in the longer term. But uh, otherwise, I would say that the context is a, is a defining character, that we have a, like a team of people, and who would be the new one who would kind of fulfill what we already know and, and can, and, and, and how we operate, and, and, and to have something that brings something perhaps new to this group would be and it can be like a personal attribute, but m more often it's more like a motivational issue or perhaps a skill issue too. Crystal. Yeah, uh, I could uh, take because uh, uh, perhaps an extreme example uh, from uh, aviation industry since I was working there for 10, ten years, for example, when you recruit uh, pilots, then you, then you recruit uh, really black and white uh, uh, persons because uh, uh, in their job in the cockpit, uh, there is only two ways of doing your job, uh, the right way or, and the wrong way. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I would definitely not ever uh, be a, a good pilot because I'm always seeking for new solutions and new ways to do it. And that's <laughs> not the place to do it. <laughs> so, and uh, then again, these uh, black and white persons, uh, they are be really, really difficult then in, in a in working communities, because they they know exactly always how things should be done, mm. and th because they are recruited uh, uh, because of that. Uh. Mm. So yeah, that's just an uh, extreme example. But yeah. <laughs> so I think this mindset has been for a long time that uh, let's hire and uh, expect good p personal traits first, and then everything is like. We can study and, and be quick learners and etc. And of course, there are professions we do not consider in, in that sense. But I think maybe this like 
new type of uh, thinking could be that if we have good uh, company values, then we actually can melt different type of persons into it. And this is like kind of like culture which really like holds or helps us in that sense. Because uh, in hospitals it's quite similar situation. Not all doctors are like <laughs> happy minded and, and uh, nice persons, but they are super, super professional. So, okay. But I also think that uh, the candidates uh, and the young people, they should uh, a bit lower their expectations mm -hmm. because there are junior position and it's uh, kind of uh, like obvious that you will start from the first steps. But uh, I think this is a problem. Uh, I was just looking for some, um, some uh, survey that said that uh, uh, IT yeah, uh, junior positions uh, uh, would like to have somehow what two and a half uh, thousand uh, in in uh, in their first salary. So uh, of course, yeah, there might be positions where it's possible, but uh, but this is something I think that uh, our schools could actually draw attention. So you can't start from the top; you have to go there. I think the problem is in Estonia that uh, in many, many companies we don't have these strong training uh, programs that we take uh, students and we train them and th that we make them believe in the company and, uh, and what are the purposes of the company and make them part of it already so they could start from a low position but they know what they're doing, they know the bigger goal. But I think that is actually a problem in, here in Estonia. Kristen. Mm. Yeah, I think um, I, I am as myself a perfect example of that because uh, I had a, a major in science of literature, so I would, n w uh, would not have qualified for a single one of the positions I, I had during my entire life, if they would have looked only at the papers. Mm. Yeah, the same for me. Uh, so we, are, we have mentioned the superhumans, uh, super employees here today already, uh, but let's now go over to uh, actual working place. So uh, let's uh, imagine that these uh, super employees have been hired and they are now working and they are successful. So what does m this me actually mean to the employees that uh, have been uh, successful applicants at first and now they are successful employees? Um, so is that it? Is, uh, is everything okay with them and they can go on until they retire or are there some obstacles in the way? Christian. Well, uh, I mentioned the public and private sector, and here, here is now we are coming to, to this uh, difference, Be because uh, in the public sector you have, uh, you have an employee who is really, really doing a great job. Of course, uh, uh, we all know that this person will uh, eventually advance uh, and get uh, better positions within the organization, perhaps if it is an organization big enough that have those uh, 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 positions, but otherwise, uh, uh, the only reward uh, that this uh, uh, person gets is actually that uh, the person in question gets even more uh, jobs, unfortunately, or fortunately, it depends on the person, of course. But, but so he or she is just loaded with more and more because uh, the person has the cap capabilities, while the private sector has uh, uh, much more tools in the toolbox uh, to, to, to give bonuses or, or, or to, to then promote or, or whatever. So this is, I would say, uh, at least uh, this uh, difference you can see between the public uh, and, and the private sector. I think, uh, maybe it's just me, but I don't think that in Estonia we have this difference between public and private sectors when it comes to loading this uh, really successful worker with uh, new assignments. Yeah, if you... Uh uh, looking at the cuttings that the uh, public sector uh, yeah, are, do, are being doing you know, over the years. So I think it, uh, the situation is much worse than in, in, in the private sector. Yeah. Yes. Here. But yeah, continuing from here, is it then okay? Uh, it, it's not because this hiring is only top of iceberg, right? And then everything starts. Uh, I worked for six years in IT company. And then we actually like build it this holistic approach or culture. They call it also seasonal approach, which means that spring is all about like uh, hiring right people, and then uh, 
providing this good onboarding programs and support and etc. And then comes uh, summer, which is all about communication, where information flows, is it transparent? Do we have some, I don't know, gatherings and all these team events and etc. Then uh, autumn is about like professional growth and really putting value into my job, but also well-being is part of um, autumn as a sector. And finally, winter is like looking back, celebrating uh, success and uh, giving feedback. And it should be kind of, you know, like holistic circle. And this hiring is only question about like spring. But if we do not like give information or, or we, we are not providing career opportunities, then it's like short-term relationship anyway. You ask about these super performers, and I think they don't work in isolation, so they have colleagues around them. So what kind of uh, colleagues are they? Are they like egoistic? Do they want to have all the best tasks for themselves? So this is one issue. And then it's also a justice issue. Does the boss give the best tasks for these people because they can rely on, okay, this person does them in time, whereas others would like to want to have also motivating, engaging tasks where they can learn they are not perhaps not so first. So it's also a social issue in, in the social context of workplace. And then this, I don't know who are these super performers, but I have done a, <laughs> quite a lot of research around comparing workaholic employees, workaholic behaviors at work. So you have a comp obsession to work all the time. You don't enjoy what you are doing, but you feel this inner pressure to, to work all the time more than any boss expects. And then there are another type of passionate people at work and they are engaged workers who really feel, feel vigorous and dedicated and proud what they are doing. And they are more socially oriented, for instance, they, they have a better work-life balance because you have positive experiences at your work, so it crosses over to your private life also, whereas workaholic persons do not appreciate others. They are a little bit like, uh, like uh, 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 victims that uh, they, 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 they feel that, okay, nobody here works except me, nobody is here at Saturday evenings except me. And, and, and this kind of problems, so they don't appreciate their colleagues. So it can have many different kind of consequences of these who perform more than average. And I would say that mature workplace allows that there are differences in performances, that some people are more capable and quicker and they know better, they have better skills, but we should in order to, at least in Finland, we have now this lack of employees nearly in every every industry and if we want to have people we should accept that that not everybody is willing to or capable of giving 100 percent we need also those who can work like half time or, or who are only learning and this kind of things Kristen? yeah here you uh, uh, you need also like uh, uh, not uh, AI, but also EI, some emotional I intelligence that uh, so that you, you can sense this and that you have a transparent uh, working community that you are discussing all the time because uh, then also, also people's uh, life situations, uh, they change uh, all the time. So it's good to be aware of that. And when you have these, uh, these uh, really excellent uh, uh, colleagues uh, doing a lot of job and wanting to do even more. I look, for example, at Kertu now sitting here, my <laughs> former colleague uh, uh, who had uh, such a desire to do more and more all the time. So then I had to, are you really sure? Are you really sure that you can make it? Because uh, then we come to another question close to what Yari uh, uh, was talking about, and that is uh, burnout. And, and uh, I mean, you, you cannot, uh, you have the responsibility not to load too much uh, also on your, on your colleagues. So that is uh, also a responsibility that, uh, that the employer have. But Agne first and then Dina. Yeah, now I think we are talking about the leadership and, uh, and the company culture here. So uh, it, when you are on board, so uh, everything that's going to happen depends on that. 
because, uh, of course, there are smaller companies, bigger companies, uh, uh, and then the smaller ones, the owners uh, are often uh, the ones who are leading, and and maybe they have a bit different mindset. Uh, but uh, but I think that the companies uh, there are more than uh, hundred plus already, so you can't. Uh, do it without having a certain uh, mindset, certain values, and you have a statement and the politics maybe already, or at least uh, agreement how we do things. So, and I think those kind of very uh, in edge people, they uh, they will uh, have the attention quite often, or someone will will uh, uh, will have the talk with them so you can't be the solo player because those ones they can achieve very good results and very quickly but uh, the work environment turns uh, badly bad uh, as quickly as well so we uh, this is the main thing actually i think this was a column from uh, 2022 what says that uh, the main thing uh, people are looking for from the, from the uh, workplace is actually the good leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the first. Mm -hmm. so. Tina, first and then <laughs> So yes, uh, maybe this is like sad news, but uh, uh, in my experience, uh, what I see, at least in Estonian companies, uh, oh, Always, even leaders are not good examples there. They, they tend to write like work-related messages after 5 or even 6 p.m. So, and they are also very overwhelmed. Often I see that um, in Estonian companies, they even don't have like normal lunch time. Um, so, and office workers' calendars are open to others, so basically everyone can book your time and you are not even bossing <laughs> of your own like, you know, life anymore. So that's kind of um, bad culture in my mind. And, and it, uh, of course it influences. And the, it, it causes also this, um, um, what, what was the syndrome, uh, post... Uh, Imposter Post syndrome, imposter because syndrome. yeah, when everyone is doing that, and my boss is doing that, then I have to be doing it. Yeah, and and that's why I think we we got this um, quiet quitting um, like uh, you know trend uh, for a while because people really decided that I don't want to live like that. I really need back my personal life uh, yeah. to myself to keep it this you know private uh, time. Mm -hmm. Yari. <coughs> yeah, leaders indeed are always a role model. Uh, in good and in bad, they are role models for others and it should be good to be aware of that as a boss. But then also for leaders, it's a huge challenge with these kind of uh, workaholic or people who are ready to work at the expense of their health because, of course, in the short term, they produce a lot, they work for the company and uh, hmm, that's good for business. But on the other hand, what happens in the longer term and how to restrict working of a, of a okay you are a good good worker you work 12 hours a day mm, should i say to you that okay stop working and <laughs> work like seven hours a day or something like that it's a and to be aware of that thing to to as part of your leadership role that you should should somehow also be able to lead well-being in the longer term and I'm not sure that all the leaders are aware or willing to take that responsibility as part of their leadership role. I think what uh, Yari desc described before, um, like having different types of, types of employees, it's the same thing that is going on in a classroom. You have uh, students, uh, pupils who are on a different level. Uh, you have to help some. Some are already ready and looking for new assignments. I think we, we grow up, but it's, it still happens. We are still different, uh, and, uh, but we have to do the same job. So in the classroom, it is up to the teacher to see, uh, to put every, everyone on the same uh, level. But whose job is it when we grow up uh, at, at, uh, at a company? Is it a leaders? Is it a good leaders uh, job? Or does a good leader have to hire a very good HR people whose responsibility it is then. So what do you think? Whose responsibility is it to have all the employees uh, feel that they are wanted, they are doing well, uh, and so on? 
people are always leaders uh, kind of main uh, aim so uh, you will have business if you have people because otherwise who is doing the job so and of course hr can never do the leader's job so they are just there to to provide uh, some toolboxes and help and things like that so uh, and and as you said that should we all be uh, even uh, no, I don't think so, because we are different, and it's not the leader's job to make everybody even. But uh, you have, as, as a leader, you, you have the um, obligation to, to treat your people uh, as uh, uh, by their capabilities. I would say that this is the way uh, we are actually, to, we do the good job as leaders. So if I see that you have more abilities, so I, I give you more demanding uh, tasks as well, but, um, but not, not everybody has to be the, the same or the same level or even. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe some more experience in, in ProExpert, uh, we actually uh, built up a culture which was bossless. We, over six years we, we did that and I, I think finally, finally we succeed quite well because uh, um, we had our values and all teams, they were independent, they had their budgets, everyone knew what to do and they had like purpose and etc. It's, it's possible. There is no need for like leaders, leaders. But um, of course this uh, company culture should be then very, very strong. And uh, now talking about nowadays leaders, so um, there are also a list of um, requirements. For instance, uh, th those leaders should be like engaging and uh, involve, involving um, others, not only like giving uh, tasks and being like, you know, having this hierarchy. So, and this is quite um, challenging thing, I think. To be like to, to really like make space for for your team mates and and really ask from them what you want or what you think or how could we do and all nowadays the leadership approaches like go like this way how to really engage how to really involve not to be like only one there and yeah I think there's actually a saying that a good leader. Um, thinks that the team works for him and uh, a bad leader uh, thinks that he works for the team. And, uh, vice versa, vice versa, yeah. yeah other <laughs> way around. Yeah, yeah other <laughs> way around. Uh, so um, my next question would be about micromanagement. Uh, I think it's in Estonia it's, it's quite of a problem. What about in Finland? Is micromanaging something that uh, leaders can drop and then everything would be better? Because as you said, leaders' mm -hmm. job is to find the perfect people not to do the job for them, the, the real assignments. But is it the problem? Yeah, at least we discuss about micromanagerism. I'm not sure to what extent it happens, but no studies perhaps, and difficult to define accurately, but I think more problem is uh, nowadays that uh, uh, this kind of less as fair leadership, that the people are left alone. It can be like self-management thing, built on purpose over a long time, where people know their responsibilities, they have autonomy, this, all this well-thought thing, then it still can be stressful. But then more often it happens like spontaneously. At this, I think in Finland, the leaders often have so many different roles. And the last one, because of the, the, the busy, busy schedules, meetings all the time, so the last thing often is that, okay, I should lead my people, I should discuss and, and, and listen to my people, and that is the thing then that may suffer as a consequence of lack of time. So perhaps that is that we lack this leadership. But one thing, no, sorry for this long talk, but not necessarily now, but I would also like to talk about what employees themselves can do because this we always talk about when we talk about the work life changes we have all kinds of all kinds of nasty things in our mind we think of the problems that are now nowadays in our, our work life and we're not there 30 years ago but there are also positive changes and one thing is that that employees are more and more able to to shape to craft their jobs uh, and to 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 still to gain the goals of their jobs, but to personalize their jobs somehow more than ever before, because we lack these kind of jobs that uh, 
Charlie Chaplin's modern types describe that you do, 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 you don't cannot be spontaneous, and of course the pilot <laughs> cannot be too spontaneous uh, in the plane. But outside the plane, how he or she meets her, his crew and and how how he collaborates, all these things that we have this kind of possibilities also to build better working lives, better working days ourselves nowadays, more than ever in, in work history. Yeah, uh, the, the micromanagement, I think uh, also it depends very much on organization. I, I've not seen too much of it, but, but I take one organization that, uh, that I've seen it from my own experience, and, and uh, that is the foreign ministry. And I guess that's the same for the foreign ministry of foreign affairs in all all the countries, because uh, uh, in those ministries are, uh, they recruit very talented young persons. But they don't recruit actually, and it's very difficult at that stage to recruit uh, persons with leadership because uh, talents, because they, they don't have that uh, experience uh, to begin with. And, but then uh, quite a few of them become uh, 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 ambassadors or, 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 or directors or whatever, uh, at some point in their life, almost all of them, sooner or later. And uh, then uh, quite a few of them are not uh, qualified for that job, even though they are really talented in, in what they were rec recruited for, actually. So that course is, uh, uh, at least in, in, in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Finland, we, we uh, uh, had, and I heard it in other countries as well, that, uh, that there were every now and then there were problems in, in in, in, in embassies, and, and it was uh, uh, particularly tricky because it was then far away from the headquarters, so it was uh, quite uh, difficult to, to, to deal with. Yeah, I do a lot of uh, workshops and trainings to uh, leaders in, uh, in Estonia, and um, once upon a time there was a company <laughs> who uh, asked that, okay, those are operational managers. Don't do too much psychological <laughs> blah blah to them. So, and then I, I wondered that what is like operational <laughs> manager? Is this is this about micromanaging only giving a task? Because what I see what the managers are lacking for is still those emotional intelligent things. How to really see my people? How to not be afraid after pandemic years? Uh, even more, so they they always ask how to motivate without money, how to really listen. Those are like still those basic things, and maybe it's how uh, about uh, those uh, op operational manager doesn't exist. Hmm. Okay. And at first, um, I have to say that I'm very intrigued about this bossless uh, <laughs> company, but uh, we have been discussing this with Tina before as well. But uh, still, I, I would say that but something just Krista mentioned that. Uh, that if you are a leader, if somebody really has given you this uh, responsibility, you should uh, have this responsibility to, to collect different type of leadership uh, toolkit. So, and I would say that um, if you start from one position, so somebody should uh, uh, teach you or, or um, uh, make you aware, for, for example, I would say that, that this is a something that called about uh, situational leadership. And, um, and as a leader, you should know about that because if one person starts at the company, um, he does or she does uh, different type of tasks or, or has the responsibility, but then life is changing or something in this company is changing. And none of us actually know everything from the first. So you as a leader, you have to take responsibility that you, you would change your leadership uh, style with that person in that situation. So, and I think that those are the things that uh, were lacking in, in uh, maybe in this, uh, in, in this process that you, Krista, actually uh, described. I could add when I was thinking about it, about the leaders and, and how, how, how uh, people get promoted also. We, fortunately, not that much anymore, but it still happens that we uh, to give some examples, that if you are a very good uh, journalist, uh, then you get uh, uh, promoted to a managing editor. And <laughs> if you are a very good uh, medical doctor, then you get promoted to the head of the entire uh, hospital, uh, and so forth. And there have been uh, some examples of uh, very good pilots that have been promoted to, to, to run the company, and, 
and that doesn't simply work. And, and, and very seldom it works so, uh, uh, with, with uh, good journalists being managed and editors. Uh, because, uh, and that is, of course, then, uh, then it is, uh, uh, it is uh, uh, the big boss who has made the, the wrong decision, uh, ultimately. That uh, if you are a good journalist, so then you need to, to keep that talent uh, satisfied. And, uh, and then you need to, to, to recruit a manager to run, uh, run the company. But I think this is changing, actually. It is changing. It is changing yeah. People don't want to have, to have the, the management or the leadership position so much anymore. Mm -hmm. so. But you still have to <laughs> give this person who is uh, who's really good at mm -hmm. uh, their job, you have to give them opportunities. And I think it's the horizontal and vertical uh, development in the company, and which is changing, yes. And maybe if I could add, then there is uh, one symptom which we call like bored out, not burnout, but bored out. And it could o also happen to best of us. Like I could be like professional in my work, but I still feel this bored out, which means that there are not maybe like easy solutions for promote such kind of specialist often. And um, I have a uh, wrote thesis about work happiness model and one thing uh, which came out that, that nowadays people expect like kaleidoscope careers. They want to be like, mm, not talented, but they, they, they maybe need to um, organize their careers that there are different like uh, approaches and skills. And not, I'm not in only in one company. I, I want to also maybe write a book when I'm pilot at the same time or, or teach others or, or do something else and often that could be like possibility for companies nowadays to organize uh, such way this working okay yeah i think it has to start from the schools that we teach our children that there will be several different type of professions that you will have to do your life so uh, uh, it, no. will, it, it, ha it should go there. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. Nowadays we, we talk about 11 different careers during lifetime because life is longer now. In my work I see like uh, 85 years old like new beginners who want to learn something else and do something else and change uh, their careers. So it's uh, like new reality. Yari. I'm afraid that many young people are also anxious about this the eternal world of possibilities, so we seniors and parents really need to support and encourage and, uh, and, and speak of these uh, 11 <laughs> jobs in the future in a way that all the jobs are like good experiences and try to do your best whatever you do and, and to be realistic and, and to, to trust that you will find your own way where you can fulfill your kind of professional dreams. But this is also that we need to be cautious about this because people, young people especially feel very insecure about the, about the choices that they have to make for the future, young and young all the time. And it's, that's, I don't like this development at all. <laughs> I wanted to speak about burning out a little bit later on, but I think we are already there. So let's continue with this one. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned bored out because uh, that is something uh, that I am really interested in because I have experienced it and I didn't know what was happening to me because um, I just uh, felt like I didn't have enough assignments that I'm capable of and uh, it led me to not burn out, but uh, be on the way to a burnout. So this is actually happening. And so maybe we can, maybe you can uh, s tell us more about what is bored out and does it lead to burning out? So I think this idea, may maybe we are in kind of like gray area right now because um, previously we thought that career should be like longer and uh, you are like, uh, you are professional, then you work like 20 years in one place or in Soviet Union, we saw that people only had one workplace and that's all. So, and in certain professions uh, also, uh, you study for a long time, then you expect that now I have my workplace, I should do that. It takes time to get in, in that, uh, you know, level. And then, when people uh, feel that, okay, I, I don't have any enough like um, 
uh, opportunities or excitement anymore. I know what I do, I do it very well, and it's very like confusing feeling, all in all. So, and um, what I have um, felt there is kind of, um, uh, we, we call it like a line of work happiness. And uh, we could say that here is like number one, and here is like ten. So, and we can actually measure it. Where, where are you? Basically, here, uh, where is ten points, is kind of our, uh, you know, dream jobs. Actually, everyone have dream jobs. There is certain exercise we can do that we can we we can remove geographical borders. We can. Uh, remove like money as a, an obstacle and even like skills and knowledge and then if you ask what is your like free dream jobs what do you want to do so if you have time then everyone could write something maybe maybe I, I want to be live in other country and do something for, for kids or, or help or, or write a book so so this is like 10 and now this one means that those are jobs we I don't even consider with a big money. Often those are like there are moral um, borders or, or two, two routine works we don't like. So and now what we see that um, people with uh, this bored out syndrome they are also like uh, dropped in that place here. They also might feel that I don't see purpose anymore. I am tired of my colleagues. I, and they are they influence others as well. They are like you know stones in 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 the lake. They make those ripples, and they are clinical. They they use irony a lot. So, and even though those companies where they work could be like very nice ones, even with a good uh, flexibility. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, and uh, for me, it's very interesting how we can like protect that or, or measure or what is happening or where that frustration comes or, and maybe they are lacking like good leadership or or some maybe their best colleagues left company, they don't have those good you know team vibes anymore. But yeah, it's very important to notice that not only being professional is, is not like work happiness. But whose responsibility is it to notice uh, the burnout? May it be the board out or may it be that someone has just overworked? Burning out is still burning out. Whose responsibility is it to uh, <coughs> notice it and to deal with it? I think it's a bit different in Finland than it is in yeah. Estonia. Could I, could I first continue yeah. a little bit because okay. this job boredom is really something that fascinates me too and I've, I've been studying it over a decade now and uh, to con continue and you also ask whether this boredom may lead to burnout and, and, and it's an interesting question because usually we think that burnout uh, comes from that there is too much of everything, too much time pressure, too much work whereas boredom traditionally is considered as a result of there's too little of everything, too little challenges. And now we find in our, our recent study, now still under international harsh review, that they may develop in tandem together. And that is also, that seems to be in our study related to, to modern work life characteristics. We talk about hindrance demands at work. So people may feel also in a good, like you said, leaders may get bored out to, or, and, and experts may be, we find that it's not only a blue collar, something like that issue, it concerns also white collar jobs in cases where you feel that you are hindered to do your best at work, there may be bureaucratic constraints, there may be like role conflicts, and there may be like, uh, yeah, this kind of uh, red tape issues. I know how this job should be done. I could do it very fluently, but the regulations and, and bosses say to do it in a different way. So these are the modern work-life reasons to feel bored out and that's why they may develop together with burnout symptoms and that is a true challenge then for <laughs> employers that okay what do we do with people who are both burned out and totally lack motivation to do what they are expected to do See, this boredom is like lack of motivation one final thing I constantly find in our studies 
that young employees experience more job boredom than elderly employees, and that is also an interesting issue to talk about. Uh, yeah, I, th I think it is very interesting, but uh, aren't we going too far with that one? I'm, I'm really in a different party right now, it seems, but uh, I think that uh, it, it should be the employee's responsibility actually to develop themselves and not to get bored. Because if you are bored, please go find something, some other job or learn something new. But uh, this should be the employee's responsibility. We, we shouldn't take away all the responsibility and say that, okay, all the leaders or the companies should tend to that and, and, and uh, find the ways uh, how, how people can uh, adapt their careers and, and uh, should be promoted and find other jobs somewhere. Yeah. Christopher. Yeah, I, 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 I'm uh, perhaps a little bit more humble to this, and when also when it comes to, to burnout, uh, I think uh, definitely it's uh, also partly, and, and this uh, boredom, also partly the responsibility of the employer, but it's not only an employer, of course, and uh, and uh, but uh, but uh, uh, I was mentioning this uh, emotional sensit uh, sensitivity in the beginning, and and. And transparency. I think that uh, that uh, the best way to 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 deal with it is, of course, to have an uh, open discussion and so forth, and see what is really uh, really possible. I think that when those phenomena exist, uh, they exist uh, uh, very much due to a lack of communication and and uh, and uh, uh, openness. Yeah, I totally agree with the, this. Um, yeah, communication and. Uh, one thing I have figured out is uh, how do we know that there is those symptoms is that I personally use um, Norman Amundsen's, Amundsen's uh, value circle and those are like personal values because often companies have their own values and uh, rules and etc. But there are personal values. And now if we really um, measure those or we ask from specialists, please, find your like free top ones and how satisfied you are now with your personal values which could be also i don't know flexibility or um, or purpose or uh, or learning or innovation and then we see that often there are the problem with with my own values so those are not meet anymore in in, in my company and of course it needs someone behind my back who really asks and takes care of that and often I see this bore out syndrome in schools. Uh, teachers often uh, feel that uh, in, in hospitals, unfortunately. And it's not easy to say that uh, study something else. Th they want to do it, but they are overwhelmed. They often don't have time. They, they are like stuck, basically. I think that's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I think the worst is when the two things come together, as you said, Yari, that uh, you have a lot of assignments, you are overworked, but the assignments you have are not motivating. They are, they are boring to you at some point. So I think that is the worst combination. So uh, you said some, in you had some interesting view on this, but what should an employee do then? What are the tools that they can do? I don't have um, answers for the, all the, those uh, kind of questions here, but of course, but um, as I said, that um, I think people uh, do have some free time still. You can be uh, overwhelmed and the things like that, but you can find time to learn uh, something, some new things to, that, that, that actually gives you some other kind of joy, which will maybe motivate you more. But, my point was actually that we shouldn't take away the responsibility from the people. Not that uh, we shouldn't pour, uh, be uh, not concerned and things like that. But, but I say that people do have to have this mindset that I can change my life. I am the, I don't know, the queen of my life, so to say. So, uh, because if someone else is there, you can like put your old wage in, in their soldier, soldier, uh, soldiers, so I think that uh, the changes will not come. I think it's, as I said, that uh, you see that it's uh, more of the problem of a younger generation. 
Yeah, yeah. But here is also a problem that, that we don't have in schools uh, such kind of subject that who I am and what I really want to do in my life, basically. It We're still lacking, school. at least in Estonia, we're still yeah. lacking this like long-term career courses because that's why they might not know what is like my but way. I, I stick my opinion that uh, you can do different things. So you, you, you doesn't have to choose it in, I don't know, ninth grade or something like that. Mm. Yari. I have got this job boredom as the last taboo in working life as we started discussing about these super performers. So it's much more okay to say I work overtime, I'm all the time stressed, but who would come go to her or his boss and say, oh, I lack, lack challenges, I have too little to do, I'm bored. It's not that easy typically in company culture. But I agree with you totally that this it's a both both ways thing. It's a leadership issue, company issue, but it's also this bottom up issue. This what I mentioned, job crafting. We have a huge international also Finnish research evidence that people can also craft their jobs, like for instance, seeking new challenges. Go there is an opportunity, there's a certain tasks that would be really inspiring. Well, I could go and ask, can I join this project? Or I could start learning. I meet in, in my job as a cashier, I meet uh, uh, people who talk different languages. Perhaps I could even during my lesser time learn the basic of certain language so I could discuss better with these clients and thereby enjoy more of my work. And we have a lot, a lot of in uh, evidence showing that this really also works. But when you are already burned out or bored out, lacking motivation, then you lack the energy to change your situation by yourself. It's a thing when you are engaged, enjoy your work, then you are more looking into the possibilities. Hey, I could do this also, I could perhaps learn new things, and, uh, but it's both, both ways. Christer Vösten then. Yeah, and it's, uh, uh, of course, uh, ultimately, anyway, it is actually uh, a little bit of a, of a management responsibility. So, so I, I had uh, now, uh, now, I gave a very simple advice to my daughter who, who started a new job uh, during springtime. Everything th seemed to be really nice, uh, the working environment, uh, the work, uh, the salary, and so forth. And then she was working. Uh, uh, with her uh, her boss, uh, and uh, after some three four months, she realized that uh, that uh, her boss is not a good one. So she called me and said, uh, asked me, what should I do? I, I said, get the hell out of there, <laughs> because uh, that person will not change. Of course, over time, people might change a little bit, but it takes too uh, long time. So. So I would say that if you have a lousy boss, then then just just leave the company. It's not uh, worthwhile uh, uh, to to stay there and, and and suffer. So everything actually starts from the management board. In my opinion, like I said, it's it's a, it's a, uh, both have a responsibilities. Of course, uh, I mean, if you if you stay on and and suffer, th that is partly, of course, your own uh, responsibility also. But. Uh, but the poor, poor uh, leader can uh, destroy so much. Tina. So yes, I also uh, love that job crafting approach. Uh, but uh, what I uh, figured out is that um, there is one exercise we can all do. Basically, we can write down all our work tasks and uh, select them uh, tasks I don't like at all, then normal ones, and then exciting ones, or good ones, or super good ones. And now when we see that we have like, let's say 80% of our work tasks are more like neutral or uh, not like tasks, then there are already problems. But what I see, at least in Estonian companies, that uh, they are lacking skills how to change those I don't like uh, tasks to normal ones or to take those away. Because that could be also a problem why we finally have this burnout or bored out syndrome. Because no one doesn't help us to, to reorganize our work. And this is also a question about management, yeah. Okay, so now, um, do we have any questions from the audience? Yes. Yeah. So my question is, um, what advice do you have for 
a microphone. What advice do you have for uh, employees that are, that are wanting to leave their position that may not be on the best terms with their employer and how can they uh, get good references for future jobs? Because I think everybody uh, at one point or another has had a bad experience with an employer and looking to move out of the company. How can they uh, turn that into something positive when the work situation is probably not the best for them? Do I get you right that uh, this is the leaving uh, situation, but uh, the recommendations will be bad afterwards? Is it so? Well, we hope not. How to get a good one? Uh, how to get the good but one? But if, if you're not on good terms with a leader, is is leaving a company always a bad thing? Should it always? Should it uh, in 2023? Should it be like a bad thing? Oh, definitely not. People have to change their jobs. So, uh, but uh, okay. <laughs> I'm not sure that I know how to change the situation to get the good reviews, but I think that uh, if, um, if in, a, in a new position on the candidacy, there, your references uh, tell that the previous company gave you are not good, you should go and just be honest with the new uh, employer. So if you are the first one who actually tends to attention to, to this uh, situation or things like that, the first one always gets the, uh, what is that? Mm. No, yeah, okay, the, the perfect, perfect um, place to, to, to go further. So I personally have used this value circle uh, I talked about. So basically, yeah, I also prefer to be honest and maybe explain that leaving that here are my personal values and I really now feel that I don't meet those. So it's not like anyone's fault, but it's, it is as it is. So yeah, to be like honest and, uh, and humble, maybe even sometime, it's good. Uh, yes, because we often tend to ask references from uh, like previous uh, employers, and that's that's true. And it's tricky sometimes if you really don't like this experience, but but you need this good um, good uh, reference. Yari. <laughs> and perhaps also first give some positive feedback for the boss and the, the experience that you have received, so it might be that he will reciprocate when he writes the recommendation. Yeah, yeah I also agree with, with everybody here, actually, uh, that, uh, that you have to be, the, be honest and, and I don't see it. Then it must be a really, really lousy leader if he doesn't uh, give you a, an, a, a neutral, adequate uh, uh, recommendation. But if that is the case, uh, I mean, it's probably possible, then to be to be honest, uh, when you when you are applying for another job, because if your uh, job history otherwise is uh, is uh, is good, so then then it's very understandable uh, a good boss, and you want to have a good boss in the future anyway. So so uh, he or she will will understand it perfectly if you if you take up uh, uh, the topic. Yeah, and one small comment, I think this uh, you know way of uh, like. Not wrong, but yeah, uh, mis mis misunderstanding situation uh, starts earlier. And for me, this philosophical point is that why we seeing us that, us that we are like opposite of managers or we are like different sides. Why we don't see that we are same side. We are doing same thing. We have like same purpose. And then um, after when we, when we need to leave company, we can also say that we didn't work out. It's not about you or me or maybe even not about company or field, but we didn't work out, sorry. And maybe we will meet um, in future, in next company, and it will flourish, so, yeah. I've actually heard uh, startup leaders and HR people saying that uh, this is also a two-way street today. It's, uh, it's uh, companies themselves, they maybe in the next few years, they want to hire the same person back. And they have to be polite, and you have to you have to encourage people to leave. Actually, today in the startup business, because there are there aren't enough workers, as in Finland, in Estonia, we have the same problem. So uh, so you have to make them feel good about leaving, because then they maybe they want to come back. They maybe they get some experience in another company, and they want to come back when this company does things has started doing things that they want to do. Okay. 
Yeah, uh, I think the the good companies already have the policy that that they call their left employees before their uh, trial period uh, is ending in this new company, so that if it's not a match, they actually get them back first. So, yeah, and it worked. It's a rough market. <laughs> so, do we have any other questions from the audience at this point? Yes. Uh, yes. Um, Thank you for a very interesting um, and uh, very needed uh, discussion. Uh, so I have a, I'm a career coach, career counselor, so I see a lot of uh, people uh, from both sides, those who are looking for jobs and those who are looking for next uh, changes in their work life and uh, about the part that the personality has become more important. So how do you... Uh, uh, prepare for that because uh, a lot of people uh, they apply they get feedback if they get that yes for skill wise experience wise everything is there but you know there is this mismatch and on the other part from the recruiters and HR part it's also an issue how do you communicate that that you know your personality or you know there was not a good fit so it's kind of uh, this uh, difficult uh, puzzling situation where uh, uh, you can feel as a job uh, uh, applicant, uh, you know, get really insecure because you don't know what you're doing wrong or if you are wrong. And the, on the other part, if you don't get any feedback or it's difficult to give feedback about, uh, you know, it didn't feel right. So, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's a difficult, uh, puzzling situation for both sides, I think. So your comments on that. Actually, I would say that, that this is something that you, at least I have been doing this, that uh, I, I'm very honest at the beginning when I'm recruiting. And this something that does it feel right or not is the subject of the first uh, discussion or the first meeting. Because uh, it's very true. You're actually looking for the skills, as we discussed before, but you also look for the match. Match for the team, match with yourself, and with some people, it's stronger and better, and the other one, you just don't feel it. So, of course, it depends on the position as well. But uh, if I'm uh, hiring from, for my, my own team, uh, my leaders or to, to the departments, this is the, uh, I'd, I have one here in the audience, and uh, you can ask her, but was it in the topic or not? So, yeah. Any other comments? Um, I think we... we Maybe this is like too philosophical or overall comment, but uh, I think uh, we, we actually live in a new world where this self-management and understanding ourselves is more and more important. So if uh, leaders are more mature and they, they can analyze themselves and be like human beings, we can maybe talk about even more and more about empathy and uh, being respectful and etc. all those psychological aspects. And then it's, uh, it's not a big deal if someone doesn't, I don't know, hire me because I, I didn't have this right sparkle in my eye. It, it's a normal thing. I don't take it personally. I, I can go further and uh, enjoy my life still. But yeah, maybe this uh, overall level of um, no, self-management is so <laughs> boring <laughs> term for that, but you, you know what I mean. It, being conscious about ourselves, this is something we need to learn more and more. Yari? Yeah, I'm perhaps not expert in that question, but I think you cannot say that your personality does not fit, but perhaps more in terms of how it, is, it would be shown in everyday work, that because we, we got the idea that in situation where you are expected to, to do this or collaborate with this, that, that we get the idea that you would behave in this and this sense. So how this temperament or, or personality is supposed to be seen in everyday work, in attending work goals would be the way to discuss further and not to speak about personality issues, I would be aware of that. So what, ha what, hap uh, what happens when uh, there are personal traits that do not go along with this company? How to 
uh, should, uh, but, but the experience does. Let's go back to the beginning where I ask which is worse. <laughs> uh, but uh, what if the experience is perfect uh, and also, um, I don't know, education and everything fits, but the person itself doesn't fit? Is it okay to be honest with them or not? Uh, certainly, the, the, it is okay to be uh, honest, and, and certainly, like I said many times already, that you have to be very, very open. But, uh, but it, if everything else fits, uh, I shouldn't be. I think we, that uh, uh, many people are perhaps a little bit too uh, afraid, also of uh, of uh, uh, a little bit of friction. I think, uh, I think it's. Uh, good, at least uh, during my life when I have recruited a, a lot of, of, of uh, persons, I don't want to have like uh, copies of me. That would n definitely not be a success story. So I want to really to have a different uh, a kind of, of, of persons. And, and that means that I'm taking at least uh, a small risk always when I recruit uh, that those persons, because they are not exactly like me. But I think it's only good for, for the organization, it's good for the team, it's good for the results, it's good for everything. So I shouldn't, I, I don't think that you should, one should be too af afraid about that. Yeah, I have a, one of the founders of Happy Me, which is a, a, a software where we can, we also provide uh, such kind of like feedback uh, sessions. And uh, there, yeah, we use this uh, 360 um, uh, feedback method. And what I see, uh, those categories, what we have uh, put, uh, also consists this personal part. And uh, often, uh, our clients, they are a bit afraid about that. So do you, you really gonna give me a feedback? You really gonna say what you mean? Am I ready? Do I want to know that? But if they start like step by step, then they are so thankful and th so grateful because people are nice normally and they say nice and good things as well. So, and uh, to be conscious is like w first step to change things. Firstly, I need to know what is wrong with my communication skills or maybe I'm too loud, I'm too slow or whatever. It's good to talk about it or, or give like space for such kind of uh, discussions and then it helps. Any other questions? Thank you. Um, the the board out discussion has been very interesting. And I, I wanted to ask about a question I think Yuri made about noticing that younger people tend to be bored out quicker than older people. And I wonder, and I look around the room and I think about half the people in the room are looking at their phones even while I'm asking this question. <laughs> How, how much of that board out is a result of an inability to focus, um, uh, a, a, a overly distracted by the technology that's all around us? And then how do you as employers help your employees focus and be able to not be distracted so much? Yeah, thanks for the question. And th this, this has been bothering me since I started to know this, this age difference. And I found it in very different occupations, in very different organizations and industries. But I have not found the research answer. What, what would predict, but I can only speculate this, like you said, things that you mentioned. Also this, that perhaps young people are a bit impatient that this everyday working is so long-term effort. Nothing <laughs> special happens all the time there. and. Uh, and, and you cannot f expect this kind of fancy highlights all the time unless you are capable of noticing. And this, I think we seniors can help in this, that, okay, giving positive feedback, now you have proceeded, and, and did you notice, hey, fantastic, that you managed to do this thing, and you learned this, and perhaps also providing these new challenges also to younger employees, not only those super performers over, over for, over, or between 35, 45 years of age, already older ones are again perhaps ignored in poor work companies, cultures, but uh, this kind of thing, paying attention to the potentials, listening to the young employees, but also somehow it's of course a challenge for young employees too, that uh, work life is not 
just an adventure all the time and uh, there are certain routines and uh, they are not rewarding intrinsically all the time. It's also this cultural discussion matter that we have YouTube heroes and everybody can be a superstar and all this. I don't know how much it influences how widely young people, but it certainly is in our culture this kind of uh, uh, expecting this kind of short-term wins and uh, and as the older generation <laughs> we hope to be thanked once in a lifetime in our work <laughs> career. <laughs> that would be fantastic. <laughs> Tina. Yeah, I think for me answer is uh, involving and engaging. So basically every employee could be part of creating this culture and be like product owner of uh, culture and uh, this also helps not putting everyone into silos and you do that and you do that and that, that, that's, that also gives some, you know, like uh, energy and uh, yeah, feeling that I'm important or something happens or I can really influence something. Agne, what is your experience? Uh, this, it was a really hard question, actually. So, uh, because I think the question was that what the employers can do to help uh, employees uh, to be more concentrated, and and I was just thinking, and, uh, and uh, for in, in our company, for example, there are certain rules that uh, you don't have to look at your emails all the time or reply all the time. You can actually do it once a day or something like that. And I think that those things are actually practical ones that. Uh, and some I have heard that uh, there, of course there are very extreme cha um, cases, but but some companies actually have banned the social media sites. So and of course, as I said, it's it's very extreme. But uh, but you can go to flow. Uh, so or, or maybe you just start to read news or something like that. So and I think that uh, actually the coworkers can uh, support each other even better than, than, than the leaders or, or, or the company rules or things like that. But this is a very good uh, question, so uh, I will wonder about, about that more. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, so far I have m mostly uh, 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 seen challenges in, in the other directions, I mean, trying then to get uh, a little bit uh, older generation to, to be, be more engaged uh, uh, digitally, but I do I I I, I do see uh, and I I, I, I know this uh, this this problem that uh, that young people have a little, a little bit uh, too high expectations and and uh, and uh, I agree with with, with what Yari said also that I I don't know how to how to deal with it with any other way than 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 uh, communication talking uh, and. And then also, uh, like uh, Yari said, that that uh, that you have to you have to <laughs> much more frequently uh, appreciate what they are doing and and, and uh, give perhaps some small rewards or what, what, whatever. So we we just have to adjust uh, to the new uh, reality. So unfortunately, our time is almost up. So. I hope everyone got some tips <laughs> to start uh, with more energy on Monday morning. I know I did. Uh, you made a lot of points that made me think a lot and think what I, as an employee, can do for myself. So thank you for that. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming.